Rub up your engines! Back in 1996, GM still made pretty good trucks. This is a 96 GMC Sierra. As you can see inside, 293,000 miles on it. Almost 300,000 miles. As you can hear when you start it up. It's running like crap. And man, does it stink of gasoline. Black, rich. I can almost smell raw gas. Now for open hood, the 5.7 liter Vortex. V8 engine. And yes, it's running like crap. What we want to hope is that it's not the stupid Vortec fuel injection system because the only metal part in the fuel injection is the feed line coming in here and going back to the tank. Everything else inside here is made out of plastic. The fuel injectors are inside the plastic manifold. They have little plastic spider feeds that go to eight injectors, one for each cylinder. In order to change those out, if you're paying a mechanic, you are going to spend $1,500, $2,000, because you can't just say, oh, maybe it's this one. You have to replace all the plastic fuel lines, all the O-rings, all the fuel injectors. It's a really complex system. They work fine until they break, then they cost a fortune to replace. Remember, this is a 96. This is one of their earlier non-throttle body fuel injection system. It is port injection. Each cylinder has an injector, but it's kind of a wonky system. When they break, they cost a fortune to fix. So let's check the raw data and see what the heck's going on. Thank goodness this is a 96. If it was a 95, we'd get very little data, but this has a regular OBD port, so I can hook my regular scan tool to it. Now, when they're running this bad, you're gonna get a lot of code, so may I go straight to live data. Go down till we see anything that looks weird. And in this case, the airflow rate from the mass airflow sensor is eight grams a second and that's way off so we're going to try a mass airflow sensor first because that's the most obvious thing and since it measures how much air goes in the engine to put how much fuel in if it's messed up it says it's getting all that air it puts too much fuel guess what it's going to run rich black like that smell of fuel it could be that simple. So shut up, get to work. Now the sensor measures how much air goes in. It's right here. It's very simple to change. You just get a screwdriver and we'll unscrew both ends of the air intake hose. Makes it an easier job. Once you unscrew them, you can take this end off and this end off. Then you just unplug it. One of these stupid safety devices which are a pain in the butt. You gotta pry that off. It just pries off on plugs and here it is and here's my personal advice buy a new one don't buy remanufactured ones they often stink this thing's brand new it only costs 100 bucks looks exactly the same you want the air to flow the same way of course so you make sure you put it back the same way simple job we'll just take the rest of it off slide that off Ooh, yeah, baby's on there there this one goes back on here well it's not leaking any air that's for sure there it goes we'll tighten that up and this end here slips on slips on here and this goes down here but before we do that this whole system's fed through the air filter so let's check the air filter and voila it's so dirty put it up to the sun you can't even see inside you should be able to see the sun shining through it you can't so we need an air filter too now here's a brand new one check the difference you can definitely see the sun inside now so we'll put this back in put on the end here notice how it fits in you want it nice and tight and the top slides on got notches and it clamps in place one in the front one in the back now we can install this right side up that clamp fell off so we want to stick it back up here get it nice and tight there that snapped on and we'll get this to snap on this is a fun one because it fits in a slot it's often hard to get in you gotta do a little wiggling come on in you go there then make sure everything's screwed on tight that's a motorcycle that's not this thing and last but not least don't forget to plug it back in or it won't give any data you can hear it snap let's close the hood and take it for a drive now you want to take it for a drive because it's got to kind of clear things out. The computer's going to have to set things up while we drive around. It's got to get used to the new part. Now granted it's an old truck with almost 300,000 miles on it and it's still got the original engine and tranny. Realize both are getting to the end of their lifespan. But as you can see it's already idling quite a bit smoother. We'll get it running on a little test road here. And yeah it's lost a lot of its horsepower. There's no arguing that. Cruise is okay but when you floor it it's lost a lot of its horsepower that's a vortex fuel injection systems those plastic injectors and everything they got 300,000 miles on them 
they're just not going to work right anymore. But we are getting it to go up high on RPMs now. And it's not backfiring or anything as we let go on the gas. So they're not shot, they're just worn out. Now if you look at the data, you can see it's down to 7.32, 7.36 grams per second. Seven's acceptable, but this old Vortex fuel injection system, here's a good way to check it. Now here's a trick to check these Vortex fuel injectors. They're inside the engine, you can't check them, but this thing's running rich. You can smell the fuel, right? So I use a temperature gun. Take a temperature of all the exhaust manifold temperatures. Now this front one here is 435. But the back one here is only 260, 270. When we check the other side, 314. When we go to the back one, back one's only 250. Well the middle one is 3.30, And here's what all that means. You're running rich, you're getting too much fuel. Running rich actually cools the cylinders. That's why those back tools are over 100 degrees cooler than the front six. Those injectors are shot. They're just dribbling too much gas into the engine. And as I warn people with these things, don't just think I'm gonna change those back two spider injectors. It's all plastic. This has 300,000 miles on it. You gotta replace everything, the plastic lines, the seals, all the injectors. I've had people try to fix two, they take it apart, then the old ones break when they take it apart, then the front ones aren't working. Basically, it's more money than this old truck is worth if you pay a mechanic. If you want to do it yourself, it's doable. It's just going to cost you a lot for the parts. The fuel pressure regulator is plastic, the lines are plastic, the injectors are plastic, the gaskets are made out of rubberized material. You got to buy all that stuff and replace it all on this V8. It ran okay for almost 300,000, but now you got to decide. I'm going to put a bunch of money in it, do I want to junk it? I don't want to drive it just running poor like this. Because, I mean, I had it going 60 miles an hour in second gear. It still runs. Once you get to a certain speed, it's okay. It's taken off that's hard because when you get too much gas, they sputter on takeoff. I know it sounds weird, but the faster you go, generally, the leaner you want the mixture. If it's really rich, it's okay on an ice cold motor. But once it's warmed up, if it's really rich, it'll have a tendency of stalling, and when you try to take off, it'll burble like this thing does. It's better than it was because we fixed part of it, but it really is going to need all that spider injection system. It's probably not worth doing. And this little machine pinpoints the whole thing. Very easy to use these heat guns. They give you a lot of information. And here's some bonus questions and answers. All right, Toyota just stated that their 2020 two Toyota Tundra's base engine is going to beat their current V8 and they said the performance model will blow you away. I don't think it'll blow me away, I just think it blows. They're getting rid of their V8 engines, they last forever, 600, 700,000, a million miles and replace them with twin turbo V6s. They'll never last as long, ever. You put that extra, look at Ford, their V6 twin turbos, they're breaking down like no tomorrow. They do not last as long. Extra pressure turbos, two of them. Extra pressure GDI injection, super 1000 PSI more instead of 45 PSI. Everything's going to wear out faster and Toyota makes great vehicles, but I think it's a mistake. People buy those big trucks because they want something's going to last forever. They expect bad gas mods and they won't get good gas mods because they're heavy. They can give the rating. Half the time the rating is a lie. I drove some Toyotas that were new and they were rated at 34 miles a gallon on a highway and I got like 24 and I just drove them with cruise control on going to speed limit. So you can't believe any of that stuff. It's a bunch of crap, but they all buy into this. Oh, well, the EPA rating, so that's better for us. Ah, blah, blah, blah. They should have stuck with the V8s. This twin turbo V6, they're fast. Yeah, you can make them go real fast. It's got two turbos on it, but it's going to guess what? Wear out real fast too. It won't last as long. It just can't. There's too much pressure. Dollar for life says, Scotty, thanks for the visit. I have an 09 Camry four cylinder automatic. How do I check to see if my oil pan needs to be replaced? The mechanic said I need to replace it. It isn't leaking at all, but he says it's getting to the point where it's going to leak. And he wanted 582 bucks. All right, find another mechanic mechanic, he's a crook. Generally, you never have to replace oil pans. They're just a gasket they're bolting on. They just sit there. They do nothing. As long as it's not leaking, leave it alone. That's a bunch of crap. He's trying to sell you stuff that you don't need. They don't wear out. Don't waste your money on something like that and find another mechanic. If he's a crook, he wants to do that and charge you all that money. I could change an oil pan on one of those things in 10 minutes. Go somewhere else. Find another mechanic. Lil Ray Rob says, I got a 2021 Hyundai Elantra. The warranty protects the powertrain up to 100,000 miles. Should I change my training fluid at 
at 60 like a normal or wait for 100,000 miles? Change it at 60. You don't want to chance it if you're planning on keeping that vehicle. It's 2021, so it's new. Let's say if you're leasing it, don't do anything. Who cares? You don't care. But if you own it, yes, change it every 60. Watch my videos on how to do it. It's not hard to do. You can easily do it yourself. You don't need to pay the dealer, even though you got that 100,000 mile warranty. Try to get anything fixed under it. Half the time, they wouldn't fix it. They'd blame it on the owner. They say, oh, there's nothing wrong. Oh, that's normal. The warranties generally aren't worth the paper they're printed on. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.